Welcome back to HANA Basics for Developers. So in the very first uh, video in this unit where we introduced the concept of XSJS compatibility within Node.js, we also saw how we brought over the whole framework for XSO data and how our existing XSO data documents basically just lift up and run perfectly fine within this new environment as well. We did a small demo of what an XSO data service looks like, but it's such an important topic and so widely used by our customers and, and so, frankly, easy to use uh, that it's worth spending some more time and exploring the full, a uh, bit more of the full range of capability of using XSO data to create OData version 2 services. Now, I want to point out that later in this video series, we will also see how we can use core data and services to generate OData services as well. But the main distinction there is that those are going to be OData version 4 services, so the newest version of the OData specification, whereas our main way to deliver OData version 2 services will remain, at least on the JavaScript side, excess OData. So you know, for a time here, as you still have the need for OData v2, most of the Fiori UI consumption still only supports OData v2, this is a very important topic. Over time, we will transition most of the excess OData functionality. You know, most of your uh, OData v2 services will become OData v4. You'll want them to become OData v4, and then you will transition to the new uh, core data and services based uh, functionality for generating services that we'll see later. But as I said, this still remains a, a very hot topic, a very important topic, and I imagine a great many of you already have XS OData services in your XS classic environment that you want to bring over and utilize without really having to make any changes to them at all in, in this new environment. So let's, uh, let's start here. Let's uh, kind of go back to the basics here and let's create a, another OData service and, and, and see just how simple this process can be. So inside of our XSGS module, we're gonna work now primarily in this XSO data folder and let's create another XSO data service. And let's call this one business partners dot XSO data. Oops, I misspelled partners. Thought that didn't look right. XSO data. And I want to show you at its ultimate just how simply we can do this. Uh, so service keyword, open close brackets, and then within the brackets, all we really need is the name of a table or view. MD business partner and that's it that's all we really need uh, to create an OData service with create update delete um, uh, operations of course read operations on this underlying database table uh, now if for this example we'll also add an alias here we'll say as business partners not that we have to do that I, I'm really having a hard time spelling partners today, aren't I? Um, now we wouldn't have to add that alias. I like to because I don't want to. I don't want it the more complicated name here of MD dot. Uh, I just want a nice, clean name, business partners. Um, that would just replace that, you know, that that internal name with a, a nicer external uh, reference name. Uh, but you know, at its heart, this is just so easy and, that, and that's why I think so many people have um, have adopted this technology and it's probably the, the main thing that people use the uh, XS layer for in in the XS classic with with HANA environment and uh, I'll just go ahead and run this now that I've saved it once again remember I, I mentioned this earlier ignore these error markers they're client side you know as long as you run and the service test, you know it's fine. You can completely ignore these these error markers. Um, but we've already ran here. Let's test it via our web module. Let's just change the URL. XSO data business partners dot XSO data. 
format equals JSON. There we see our entity sets, the tables or views that we have in our service. We can have multiple. This particular service only has one, so there's not a whole lot to, uh, to look at here. But now we can add that entity set to our URL. Business, uh, or actually first, we want to look at the metadata. So let's just add dollar sign meta metadata onto the end here. Really having a hard time spelling today. Uh, and what we see is we see the introspection of our service. It gives us all the columns, all, all the entity sets. There's our business partner entity set. It has a particular type and um, has a key. We know which is our key column. It lists all the keys in the table, their data types, and their, their lengths uh, or, or other technical information um, in, in the case of um, you know, like date and time and stuff like that. So we didn't have to declare this document anywhere. We didn't have to define this in our XSO data. There's nothing else going on here other than when this request is made, the XSO data server-side framework knows the database table or view that is underneath this service, and it goes and reads the catalog of the Hunter database and retrieves this information dynamically. If I were to go change this table, then the document... Uh, the metadata document would change as well. Uh, so it's a, it's a very powerful aspect of, of just how easy um, it is to get these services out there and how dynamic they are. Uh, let's see some of the data that's in the service now. So we'll add to the end, we'll add our entity name, business partners, and we want this to be in the format of JSON. And there's all of our business partner data every every record out here, the different columns, um, you know, the data uh, has been formatted, adjusted, you know, like the dates have been put in a, a JSON uh, date format there. Um, you know, we didn't have to write any code to do any of this. We didn't have to write a query. Um, you know, it's, it's a really powerful, powerful framework. And we can do all kinds of cool things. Basically, what OData tries to do is take the basic SQL syntax and just represent it via URL. So we can add things like where conditions and uh, limits on the number of records that we get. We can skip records. So for instance, if I wanted, um, if I wanted to get the top three records, so I'll just add uh, another parameter here, top equals three. That's only going to give me three records back instead of all the records. Maybe I add to this um, uh, dollar sign skip five. So we'll skip five records in and then give me three records. So you see record num partner number five, six, and seven. And this becomes really useful because now on the client side, we op often want to represent this data in a table, but we might have thousands hundreds of thousands, millions of rows of data. We don't want to retrieve it all and, and show it on the client side. We want to just know how many records there are, and then we want to scroll through that table and only load the visible range of data that's in the table. And using the combination of top and skip, that's how we can rerun the query as the user scrolls physically you know, uh, in the table. They, they, they move the scroll bar. Uh, we're, we're making requests to the back end, but we're windowing those requests so that we're only seeing the results that match the visible area. We cut down on the amount of data transfer from the, the database to the app server to the client side because these parameters, this top three and skip, they get pushed all the way down into the generated SQL query. So HANA is never retrieving more data than it needs to, and the client side is never being sent more data than it, than it needs. So... Even with very large data sets, we can have responsive um, and, uh, and, and quick loading applications uh, by keeping the data load and the data processing within the database where, where it belongs. Now, this was a simple example, and I know it's a somewhat uh, redundant to the very first example, but I thought it was worth going back and breaking down and, and looking at OData in detail. Uh, next video will continue to expand on OData v2 with XSO data, and we'll see how to have multiple entities and define and utilize relationships between those entities.